Hello my friends, my name is Irvin, also known as Kobuman. In this video, I will show you what the best alternative is for Microsoft Office. So if you find yourself as someone who really could use Word, Excel, Access, or a presentation type of software, then you probably looked at Microsoft Office as the very first thing. However, you probably found that it's super expensive. Well, in this video, I will show you the best alternative you can get for free. It's 100% for free. And if you're not familiar with it, this is the best place to be when it comes to introduction to this type of software. All right, guys, let's get to it. Let's see what we have to do in order to download and install what is called Open Office. So what I have here is actually a remote desktop session of my other computer. The other computer host name is Tech Support. See what I did there? It's Tech Support. Anyways, uh, because, you know, I'm supporting you guys and, you know, I'm whatever, it's nerdy. Um, anyways, so let's go open up our favorite browser. In our case, I just go ahead and picked, uh, what is this, Microsoft uh, Edge? I don't know, does anybody even use Edge? I, I'm not sure. Uh, anyways, so we're going to go to Google, our best search engine, guys, the best search engine in the world. Of course, I'm going to say that because, you know, Google owns YouTube and I'm going to put this on YouTube anyways. So we're going to go in there and we're just going to type in open office, right? But if you want to be more specific, we're going to type in Apache open office. If you ever heard of, of Apache and if that sounds familiar, you're probably thinking of an Indian tribe, uh, I should say native Indian tribe or native American Indian tribe. They call you know, they're called Indian native Indians because it, it's anyways, Columbus messed up, man. He thought that he arrived in India when he when he arrived in America. So anyways, you're either thinking of Apache, the tribe, or you, if you're if you're into web development, you might be thinking of Apache web server, right? Anyways, um, it's probably the same company. I'm not 100% sure on this, but it would make sense, wouldn't it? Same company, Apache. Anyways, enough of goofing around. So here we are at our favorite uh, website, which is google.com. Uh, and the uh, first thing that shows up after research for Apache Open Office is of course, Apache Open Office. So obviously we can you know click on a couple of different things, but the search results change. So what I recommend, just click on the first thing that says uh, open uh, or it says Apache Open Office. Um, I would have normally said, click download right away and it'll take you there immediately. You could do that. But the search results, they do change. They do change, so sometimes you will get different results. Anyways, if we go to the main main website, which is openoffice.org, we are going to be taken to what gives us an option to download Apache Open Office. So if we look down, um, you have some simple uh, menus here where it says, I want to download Apache Open Office. So let's go ahead and click that and see what happens. And I like how it says here, download Apache Open Office for free. And it says, really? And if you want to click on here to get more information, you can certainly do so. Um, so this is one of those special videos. Not is it only special in the, in the fact that we're installing free Office software? Uh, is that it's my first time officially on camera and doing a uh, computer tutorial, if you will. Tech support. Uh, anyways, so the, the first thing that comes up uh, on the top of, of this uh, website as a result, um, once we select that uh, link is an ability to download it, right? So without uh, beating around the bush too much, we can do the drop down here. You know, if we click on the drop down, we can select different versions. So if you want to install this on Linux, you can certainly do so. So, um, you know, if you're using Linux, then more power to you, man. I, I, I'm really happy for you. I, I really want to, I really want to switch to Linux hundred percent, but man, certain applications don't allow me to do so. So you can download it for Linux as well. And for OS X. So if you have a Macintosh, you can certainly do so. And it gives you some different options, whether you want 64 bit or a 32 bit version of uh, those well i should say linuxes um i don't know what this osx part is i'm not a mac person so i'll pass on that for our demonstration i'm just going to leave it at windows.exe i'm going to click download 
And it says here to wait, you know, the typical thing, it says you wait a little bit to uh, download your uh, application. You know, the countdown is, you know, down, so it should be down. Oh, there it is on the bottom. I keep forgetting that, you know, this, uh, this edge thing is different, a little bit different. Although admittedly older version of um, IE do this. I don't know, I think the same. Anyways, who doesn't, who uses IE? I don't know, maybe some people, some places. My work, people that work, that where I work. work. Anyways, click on save or run. I usually like to save it so that way it doesn't disappear when I click on run because it, it is being downloaded into a temporary location of your internet browser. And that is periodically cleaned up, you know, depending how you have it set up. Um, not necessarily all the time, but you know. Anyways, I'm gonna click, it says downloading here and it shouldn't take too long since I have 200 megabits connection. And uh, did it download already? I it should have downloaded already. Does it say finished? Open in folder. Let's see. And that's not it. Eh, looks like it already downloaded. So that's awesome. You know how in some videos when people do tutorials, you 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 know they tell you go to this website, you click, and uh, you know it, it will it'll download, and they have to cut the video, and then they have to go back to it. Well, luckily I don't have to do that. Sorry, I'm I'm rubbing it in a little bit. Although I'm sure there are people out there with a the faster internet. Anyways, that's downloaded. It's 137 megabytes. So let's go ahead and install that bad boy for free. I'm gonna close Chrome, go away Chrome, and we got our typical menu when it comes to selecting any type of package that you normally install when it comes to software. So this should be pretty simple. We click next, and then we can choose a installation uh, folder. And I'm just gonna leave it here default, and it's gonna install it inside of, looks like my local profile desktop. So you know what, I'm actually okay with that. If you want to change this, you can certainly do so. You can click browse and you know, most, most programs are installed of uh, program files folder. And uh, I don't know whether this is a, I'm assuming this is a 64 bit. So I'm going to select just regular program files, which is 64 bit folder in our case. And uh, you know what, just because I'm not sure if it's actually going to create a, a folder in there. I, again, you guys don't have to do any of this. You can just click next or whatever, but I'm just trying to be very uh, um, very specific about this because you know, IT guys do that sometimes. Anyways, um, open, open office. I'm just gonna call it open office. It hopefully installs that inside of that. And now um, it looks like that was probably just a temporary location anyways. So I'm just gonna click next on the next uh, pop-up and it says, you know, welcome to the installation with Wizard. I shouldn't, I shouldn't be getting ahead of myself. I'm, I'm, I'm trigger happy as they say, but not like, you know, just, you know what I mean? So I'm just gonna click next. And, uh, you know, if you want to fill this out, this usually happens in office installation as well. It basically ask you what your name is. So I'm just gonna use my alias, which is Kobu man, but my real name is Irvin. So let's just do that. Organization. My organization is uh, Cosmic Novo LLC. That's the name of my uh, LLC that I have. Uh, anyways, and you here you can select if you, you're the only one who's allowed to use it or just, you know, everyone else. You can leave this at default if you share your computer and you want your other folks or your peoples to use it as well. Now, here is where we need to make more selections in case you want to install additional software and not just Word and basic stuff. So if we leave it a typical, that's what's going to install. But if we click custom and select next, we can see that there are other options available here as well. And so you guys probably seen this type of menu. By the way, um, that installation folder that I created, that was going to be a temporary folder. So I kind of uh, messed up on that. I assumed that it was actually asking me to uh, select actual installation folder, but in, that, that wasn't the case. There was just a temporary folder uh, where it kept temporary installation uh, data for uh, basically this part to come so that it can install it. Um, my excuse is that I'm actually doing this um, as a remote desktop. So what I'm looking at, is actually on a 4K screen and I'm looking at the 1080p screen 
uh, that's within 4K, so that everything looks fairly tiny to me. So, anyways, that's my excuse, whether you believe me or not. I I deserve it either way. <laughs> so, um, open Office Writer. Let's click on that. I think I'm looking at that, and then I can just make sure that that this is selected. This feature is selected, and looks like Open Office Calculator is selected. Draw. So basically, that's I am assuming similar to Paint. Um, I don't have to tell you what Calc is. It's a calculator. Open Office Impress. Uh, this creates and edits presentation for slideshows. So similar to PowerPoint. And then we got Open Office Base, which is a create and edit databases using Open Office. So similar to Access. By the way, whenever you buy a Microsoft Office, Access um, does not come with it unless you buy Microsoft Office Pro, right? That's the older version. Nowadays, I'm not exactly sure his because it's Microsoft Office 365. I think that's what it's called right now. That's a subscription-based thing, and I'm, I don't even want to get into that because I don't even know for sure what that is. And then we got Open Office Math, and it says create and edit scientific formulas and equations by using Open Office Math. Now, I'm hoping this is Excel, but I'm not 100% sure on this, so we will have to see. And there are other additional uh, components that we can install. And let's see, what does it say? Common components and additional programs shared by all open office programs. This feature requires zero KB. Okay. But I didn't select anything. Let's see what, what, let's see what this is. Expand it. That's what I wanted. There we go. So let's see, what do we have here? We got some dictionaries. You can install additional dictionaries if you want. And I also need to update my immune net, which is antivirus. That's the pop-up. And we've got, uh, so it, dictionary helps you with spelling, you know, it's, it's a dictionary. Uh, graphic filters, additional filters required to read in uh, alien graphic formats, uh, sample filters, Python, Online update, I'm just gonna go through this real quick because these are not typical things that you would use as an Office uh, user. Uh, Windows Explorer extensions and uh, so some other basic stuff that are not necessarily part of uh, Microsoft Office as something that you would be aware of as a user, right? If you're looking for specific settings that need to be installed and supported with this installation, then this is something you might want to look at. So anyways, I'm going to make this simple. So I'm just going to click um, select. And uh, here it's going to ask, it's asking us, um, if we set it as default, uh, it will uh, associate all of these other documents with it. So for example, Microsoft Word, Microsoft Excel, and Microsoft PowerPoint presentations, which is exactly what we want. So we're just going to click next. And of course, do we want a... Uh, start link on our desktop of course we do we always want that link guys we want that link for easy access so we can in, have access to our open office so you know we can use it all anyway, right here here it comes it's installing and it's installing on an ssd so it shouldn't take that long i mean uh what is it it's, it was 134 megabytes uncompressed i don't see it being any bigger than 500 megabytes so and this sounds about right. There it is. 500 megabytes roughly installed. Let me see if I'm actually correct on that or am I just pulling that out of my butt, depending on how high the compression was. So let's go to it. I'm just curious real quick. I'm sorry. I really want to know now. Let's see what the, you know, I might be totally wrong. 317. So I was wrong. So it basically doubled it roughly. Anyways. So now that it's installed, we have our open office icon as we told it to put it on desktop. Oh, what, what did I do here? I could swear things just moved. Anyways, open office. I'm just going to click on that to see what we have as options. And here we go, guys. This is exactly what we wanted as something that would replace our office, Microsoft Office. And uh, yeah. so we got text document that we can create. We can create a drawing. We can create a database, spreadsheet, presentation, and formulas so i must have missed this part where it said it was going to install the spreadsheet obviously this you know this explains the uh, uh that this would uh, be alternative to excel obviously and uh 
I, I don't know why. Maybe it's because these tiny letters that I can't see. I'll have to do something about that a little bit later. But I'm hoping you guys can see everything that I'm doing here properly. So anyways, we do have, you know, typical stuff that we need. Text document. Let's go ahead and open that up. So here it is. Very simple. Very familiar. It's purposely designed. So it's very similar looking to Microsoft Office. Let's open this up. Let's do a spreadsheet. There's spreadsheet. Here's our formulas. And we can, you know, do all kinds of different stuff. It looks very, very familiar, which I think is awesome. Let's see what else we have. Here's our presentation. I've used this a few times. We can select it from template. And okay, sure. Let's just do this. Uh, when it comes to certain things like additional templates, I'm just going to click create here. Uh, when it comes to like templates and stuff like that, I'm pretty sure Microsoft Office actually has a little bit more stuff, this and that. It might be a little bit prettier on this and that, but um, in the end, it, if it does the job, then this is this is good enough, right? And we can add more, create our presentation, and it's simple as that. When it comes to this, we just hit F12, I believe, to get into our presentation. Let's see if that works. Is it F12 or is it F5? Uh, it's one of those. Anyways, slideshow F5, that's what it is. We can get into our slideshow and... Uh, <laughs> It's, it doesn't like the fact that it's remote desktop, probably. <laughs> anyways, I stopped it because the video, anyways. That's what that is. And I'm just gonna discard that. And let's see what else we have. We have drawing. Look at the drawings here. What you'll look at that. And we can do some drawing if you want to mess around with this. And you know, draw things and you know, what have you. I particularly didn't really use any of this stuff when it comes to Microsoft Office. I use alternative tools, but if this is what you need, then great. Um, this is just some kind of a math formula thing. I don't know. I'm not even going to pretend because I suck at math, but here's our database. So this is our basically alternative to access and you can here set up a uh, different uh, database connections. So if you're into access and databases, this is something to uh, consider. Um, there is a ODBC. This is a very typical setup, and I do have a video on that too. If you want to, uh, if you want to check it out, I do have a, a video on how to set up ODBC drivers and Oracle drivers, Microsoft Access, all kinds of different things you can set up um, to connect to if you want to connect to existing database when it comes to Access. Of course, you can create your own new create database. Let's see how that looks like. Sure, let's call it whatever. And uh, it asking me to install JRE, which I'm not going to do right now because I don't really need to create a database, but that's one of the prerequisites, guys, that we need for access database. All right, guys, let me know if you like this type of format that I've switched to a little bit of a face cam action and a uh, little bit of a, I don't know. I don't know. It's it's different. It's definitely different for me, and I'm kind of adjusting to it, adjusting the lights and everything else. See how I can make that working properly. I do have a green screen behind me, which I'm hoping is keyed out properly, and uh, you know, it just kind of adds to it, and it becomes a little bit more complicated when it comes to setup. But now that it is set up, I'm hoping that it comes out decent. So I'm going to upload this, see what you guys think, and uh, uh, in my next video. I think it's going to be about using Google Docs, using voice typing in Google Docs. So it's going to be probably titled how to write with your voice using Google Docs, probably how to write an article just by talking or something like that. If you want to check that out, don't forget to subscribe, a like, leave a comment. I'll ask, I'll ask. Well, I'll ask you to leave any comments, but if you leave any comments and you have any questions to ask, I'll be more than happy to answer them. All right, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Have a wonderful day. Bye-bye.